financial problems, elder law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to this segment of Law and Reality. Today's topic is reverse mortgages and complications. Brian Small, good morning. Good morning, Ken. Always a pleasure to be here. Pat Samasco. Good morning. I'm excited about this show. The three of us are going to crunch this issue together. Right, so, first of all, what is a reverse mortgage? In my opinion, Give a it source in of evil. Terms. I'm going to put up on the screen the definition, but w explain to us what it is. Well, as I said, Befi uh, besides the source of evil. Okay, a reverse. So we know where Brian is on the issue. Right, let's move on to Pat. A reverse mortgage is when you take take money out of your house, you have no mortgage payment. So you're, you're borrowing money, you have no mortgage payment, interest continues to accrue on the payment, and you get to live there with no principal and interest payment at all during your lifetime. At the end of your lifetime, then the mortgage, the, the bank takes back the house through foreclosure usually, and the house is gone. You have no equity, there's nothing left to sell but you get to live in your house for free with no principal and interest payment. It depends though. If that sounds pretty good to me. It depends though because people think that they lose the house automatically. If you borrow 100000 and you die two years later and now there's 120000 owing on the house, but it's worth 300000 you can sell you the house. Absolutely. Absolutely, but if you live through your natural life expectancy, yeah. there's usually, at, at least the older reverse mortgages, there's no equity left right. in the house, especially with a reverse mortgage that was taken out before the financial collapse. And there's a lot of those. Well, the, the homeowners won in those situations then, if you it look did. at that Yeah, because the market values went down and they got the it, benefit. It, except there's a really big problem, and we'll talk about it, but it's where the homeowners lose. And that has to do with not understanding and not paying all the responsibilities that you have under yeah. a reverse, reverse mortgage. There's risk. Just to get the reverse concept out of there, it's the traditional mortgage you make payments and the mortgage balance goes down. The reason why they call it reverse is you don't make payments, so the balance on the loan goes up because interest continues to accumulate. But the benefit, it was conceived as a means of helping retirees with limited income use their accumulated wealth in their home to cover their basic monthly living expenses and health care in their later years. <coughs> Conceptually, it's a good idea, but you've got to look at it carefully. Now, in terms of types of reverse mortgages, the common one that you see all the time is called the HECM, the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. It's governed and regulated by the Department of uh, Housing and Urban Development. It's not a government loan. It's issued by a regular mortgage lender, but the FHA provides insurance. And the insurance component is the component that says if you outlive the equity in the home and you, can, you continue to stay in the home and ultimately the home is sold for much less than the lender is owed, FHA makes up that difference. Now they do it by charging you a premium. They charge you a 2% premium at the loan closing and a half a percent premium per year on the outstanding balance on the loan. So that's the, the concept there. There's also what we call a proprietary reverse mortgage offered by a couple lenders and that comes in when you can't meet FHA guidelines and one of them is FHA guidelines only go up to 679,000. So if you have a big home that you're trying to reverse mortgage with a lot of equity, you use the proprietary, and sometimes those are called jumbo reverse mortgages. Now the other thing to throw out for background is, okay, how do I get the money? And you have basically four options. You can take out the loan and you get a line of credit that you can draw on as you elect to. You can get a fixed term payment for a stated number of years, 
or you can get what is called tenure, which is the most common way, which gives you a fixed payment as long as you continue to occupy the property. The as payment your is to you, though. To you as your primary residence. And you can also take out a lump sum, which is a dangerous way, but you just <coughs> take the money right off the bat when you reverse That's what most it. people think, that they just take it all out at one time, and they don't have to. They can pull it out a little bit at a time and just pay the interest as accrued on that little bit at a time. And, and the benefit of that is, is if the, the, is the smaller amount you borrow, the smaller amount you have to pay back when the house gets sold right. when you don't, if you don't want to live there anymore. And risk. You take all the money out and you go and you lose it at the casino or you go right. to a the financial fun planner that says, hey, let's put it in uh, international uh, equity funds. Yeah, that's what you can't do. And there's some real strict guidelines. You're not allowed to take reverse mortgage money and invest it in the market. And actually on your applications for the financial plans that you do, they're asking, did this money come from a reverse mortgage? But unscrupulous financial planners say, take the reverse mortgage money and put it into your bank account. And then, and then on the application, so, no, no, the money came from the bank account, which is completely unethical. Yeah, because so Don't you, ever do that. You're gambling with your right. last asset, right. typically. You're not doing the reverse mortgage if you're sitting on a million dollars in your IRA and 401k. You're doing this because you need that money to live on. That's what you should be using it for if you're going to use it. Now, how much can you get? That's a formula. I'm going to pop on the screen uh, the words, your guide to reverse mortgages. Google that, and you'll find several different calculators that you can put in your age and the amount and it'll give you a rundown on how much it, the co loan costs are and how much you can receive in the form of a reverse mortgage. It You'll be surprised the older you get the more you can obtain but you'll be surprised in some respects how little you can obtain in relationship to the market value of your home. Which is a very interesting thing because reverse mortgages you used to be able to obtain a substantial amount. There used to be, the rule of thumb used to be take your age, subtract 10, and that was generally the percentage of money that you, uh, uh, equity you could buy. Right, so your I'm house. 38. I mean, <laughs> or, let's pretend I'm 63. <laughs> And in subtract 10 is you can 53. Borrow 53. But nowadays, it's a much smaller amount. Yeah, it's smaller. Because I ran that calculator on those numbers and it was much less. So did less. your wife. She wants yeah. that new car. Yeah. The risks <sighs> are significantly higher with today's reverse mortgages. When we come back, we should talk about that. We'll be back after the break. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco so Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco so Law today. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. Worth they have gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Fav Gross. 
We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Favgross today, 888-235-HELP. All right, so we're talking about reverse mortgages. All right, so conceptually, when is it a good idea? Here, here's where I see it. The home is owned free and clear. You're old. I don't like the word old, but I mean you're up there old. You're, you, you've crossed 79. Okay? Like your age. Thank you. You won't feel that way when you're 78. Brother, I guess. you're, you're two you. weeks behind him, man. I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> and you're in this circumstance where you're looking to supplement your monthly income to make it so you cover your living expenses. You still got Social Security, but maybe you've exhausted the IRA or the 401k, and you're looking at it and you're saying, I don't have enough money coming in to cover my living expenses. I need to do something. And you have this asset and you still want to live in the home. It's right for you. It's not too big and so forth. But when's it not a good idea? All right, first of all, and we see this, you don't have a lot of equity in the home. So you're not going to get a lot of money out of it and now you're going to leverage it away. You've taken the loan at too young of an age so the amount that you able to get from the house is not going to cover the necessary living expenses you need as long as you live and you don't have another alternative. And the last one is you're not, you don't really need the money. You're just taking it because you want to spend it using other things and that can be, that, that, can, that frivolous type of a move can burn you in the end when you then run out of living expenses. But you know, where, where you say when you don't have enough uh, significant equity, you're, you're making an assumption there that you need the money to, to, live, on. to live on. There's, a, there's on the alternative, if you have, sometimes people have a mortgage and they're retired and they're finding it difficult to pay right. the ongoing mortgage. To get rid of the payment. Yeah. By taking the reverse mortgage out, even though they have limited or almost no equity, if they're eligible to take that reverse mortgage out, then they have no mortgage payment anymore. Yeah. So if their so, remaining reserve of Social Security right. and maybe a pension covers their regular expenses after not having a mortgage payment, then it could be a good idea. It's a good yeah. idea if that and can happen, though, but you have to have enough equity in the house because you have to pay off your first mortgage. Right. Now, the other time it's a good idea is if you ran out of money and mom needs help to stay in the house. You need to pay for caregivers. You need to help use her income to take care of her in the house because she's getting up there in age and can't take care of herself, Creates which is also can be a bad idea because if mom leaves the house and has to go to an assisted living or possibly a nursing home, the mortgage company calls that loan. Yeah, you have to be there. Yeah, and doesn't that to walk through those yeah. carefully in a minute? Wait, but and, and don't will you run a further risk of if mom has to go into the nursing home, now you've got a Medicaid lien that might be coming in that if they have to sell the house. That's, they, well, they, the problem is, yeah, the house is exempt. If you vacate the house, now they they call the loan and you have to sell it. You t you have to sell it in any equity left over is cash that Medicaid will take. Or yeah, can I hold that thought a little bit because I want to put it in this scenario and give, a, I want to give us a little case study with Bart and Betty. But before you get to there, the, the, here's the important, I think an important point. Reverse mortgages have a place, but it's limited. And right now you'll find the person who's selling the reverse mortgage thinks it's the greatest idea since tomato soup. And the decision is a critically important one. You should sit down with someone who's not selling you the mortgage. You should sit down with somebody who's not going to take the money and invest the money that you get and, and it has a different motivation to prove it. You should sit down with someone like Brian, Pat, myself, evaluate whether it's the right move for you in your circumstance that's detached from the issue so that you're careful to make sure that you right, make the right decision. Now, let's <laughs> talk about problems. These are the things the mortgage brokers and the commercials don't tell you about that become a problem. The biggest one that I hear Brian talking to me about, because he comes into my office on a frequent basis and says, Mr. So-and-so, we're just in, they're facing foreclosure on a reverse mortgage. What's going on there? Well, okay, so when you have a reverse mortgage, there's no payment on the mortgage. Great. It's so great, how can right? I be foreclosed? Because people forget that you still have to pay your property taxes and your homeowner's insurance. And that component quite often gets failed to be paid. People are still struggling with the limited amount of money that they have coming in. 
what, what I see quite often is mom has a reverse mortgage on her house, but she only has $1,200 of Social Security money coming in, and that's it. And it's not enough to pay the property taxes, the insurance, her medicine, and food, and the electric bill, and the gas bill. Particularly if she used the reverse mortgage to get rid of her mortgage, and she doesn't have any cash credit line coming. Or she, got rid or of the she re used the reverse mortgage, got the cash, and spent it. Or what I've been seeing is they use the reverse mortgage to pay off all their credit card debt. That is that, the worst thing to do. That is the worst thing to do. <laughs> the so, worst. So, and wait, just a uh, side note. Why is that the worst thing to do? Because the money's gone, it's never coming back, and and we can get rid of the credit right. card debt, debt for virtually a bankruptcy. nothing. A yeah. chapter, you keep your house, you file a chapter seven, right. and you it costs you two thousand yeah, dollars to get rid of thirty thousand dollars of credit when card. When you're debt. over sixty-five in Michigan, you can protect fifty-seven thousand dollars worth of equity in your home. If you're a married couple and you don't have joint debt, you can protect a million dollars equity. And if you've home. taken out a reverse mortgage, you have no equity in the home. That's right. Or there's very or there's limited, depending on the type of reverse mortgage. The bottom line is, is there's more than one solution. But the biggest but issue never you use have, the money for the credit never. cards. Right. But you have to know that property taxes and insurance need to continue to be paid. And if you don't have that money you're going to end up in a problem. Okay, so the property taxes were not paid, the insurance wasn't paid, what's the solution there? Can I get a, can I get a loan modification? No, you can't, they won't modify your loan. So how do you, what do you, you do to you, save the home? Chapter 13 is the potential solution to save the home. All right, so and what will chapter 13 accomplish? What it does is it says, all right, we're going to take that arrearage that we have on the property taxes and the homeowner's insurance and we're going to spread it out over a five year period to pay it back. So you get five years to get caught up on the property taxes and insurance you're behind, but you then have, you have to start to, staying current. You have to maintain current. and current at the same time. Uh, so the, I suppose the problem there is in a Chapter 13 you have to have adequate income to fund the plan? Quite often we get family involved to help us. You need the kids. Oh, you can do that? Yes, they you can. can. sign on to providing assistance? Yep. So the 13 is the solution in that pickle. That is true. All right, we'll be back after the break. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Thav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. You're all set to retire. You have your home paid off, money in the bank, and sound investments. But if you're not careful, all the things that you work so hard for can disappear. At Samasco Financial, we'll help you prevent that. We go beyond ordinary asset management. We'll safeguard everything that you have by creating a plan made specifically for you. How much can you afford to lose? Nothing. Protect the people that you love and the things that you have. Call Samasco Financial today. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Thav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Nothing provokes panic and fear like the threat of a school shooting. Unfortunately, we've seen a sharp increase in students making copycat threats in order to gain notoriety. I'm Macomb County Prosecutor Eric Smith. Students, this behavior will not be tolerated. Felony charges will be brought against anyone who threatens the safety of our schools. Parents, please talk to your children and pass along this message. If you threaten our schools, it will cost you your future. Time for announcements. I want to remind our viewers, listen to us Tuesdays, 11.30 a.m., Saturdays, 7 a.m. for Law & Reality Live on Praise 102.7. Also, be sure and sign up for our monthly contest, free $50 Visa gift card, Law & Reality hat, and copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. Just go to the website, fill out the form, and once a month we pick a winner and then send out, send out the package to you. We've got a couple seminars coming up on Wednesday, July 11th, 6 to 7.30 p.m. 
An estate plan avoids costly fireworks. We're going to go through all the elements of an estate plan, documents that you need while you're living, how to avoid probate, handling a probate fight when it happens. Attendees get a $300 gold certificate off the cost of any estate plan. You want to sign up at thavgross.com, lawandreality.com, or call 888-235-HELP. Then on Wednesday, August 1st, 6 to 7.30 p.m., we have a seminar on elimination of debt called Debt Free Is Me. We're going to go through all the methods that we use to preserve future income for savings so that you have something to retire with. Debt elimination is the key part of the process. You want to eliminate the debt so you start saving the money. Jeff Kirshner will join us for a special segment addressing disability. Attendees get a free copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. And then sign up the same way, thabgross.com, lawandreality.com, or call 888-235-HELP. Also remember, you can always come in to Thav Gross for a free consultation. Meet with Pat Samasco on elder law issues, Brian on debt, estate planning issues, Jenny Lingo with tax issues, business issues with me. Just call 888-235-HELP or go online on our websites and sign up. Also check out free reports on the websites, How to Save Your Home from Foreclosure, Retiree's Guide to Social Security by Pat Samasco, and Business Formation and Loans and Grants for Small Businesses. I want to thank our sponsors, Stav Gross, Samasco Law. Now back to the show. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. Okay, let's do a hypothetical. Bart and Betty. Bart has title as the owner of the home. For some reason, Betty's name is not on the deed. She's not the borrower. She's not the owner on the home. Bart has to go into the nursing home. Betty fails to pay the taxes and maintain the insurance. The bank starts foreclosure for non-payment of taxes and insurance. Brian, can you stop the foreclosure in that case? Well, it's an interesting question because, first of all, Betty doesn't have title to the home. I could file for Bart on Betty's behalf. Bart doesn't know what he's doing. He's doesn't, got dementia. Does, does Bart, has Bart given Betty the power of attorney? Bart thinks you're Ken Gross. That's how far you look gone. so much alike. That's how far gone <laughs> Bart is. Bart is out the window, buddy. We got the same hairdo. You know why that whole happened with Bart? It's a second marriage. His kids don't have any relationship with him, and her kids don't give a rat's, you know what, because they're not getting the house after after Bart dies. So what do you do? So Bart, well, Bart can't file. So Betty is going to have to file on behalf of Bart. She's going to have to go to probate court. Or, But what would avoid probate court? What power of attorney. Avoid? Power of attorney. If Betty had given, if Bart had given Betty a durable power of attorney, Bart could act for, Betty could act for Bart, and then in that circumstance, Betty could go ahead and file the bankruptcy petition on Bart's behalf. A hundred percent correct. And I'm going to, right now, everyone that has power of attorney should look at those because the power of attorney that you have has to have the language in it that allows you to do that. Most of them don't have that language yes, to go to court. Like the UAW you ones, need to they make have very sure you update powers. those. 
So, uh, so power of attorney is critical there. If you didn't have the power of attorney, you'd have to go to probate court yeah. and get Betty appointed Bart's conservator, and then she'd have to file to stop the foreclosure. But you have a limited period of time to get those foreclosures. You have to file that Chapter 13 by when? You have to file it before the foreclosure sale occurs. You know, we, we generally say we like to see you at least the day before, no later. But the other so. problem is, though, he's in the nursing home. He's out of the house. They'll call the loan if he's out of the house. So you have to get something going on with the spouse. Yes. So, so, so that's an interesting question is as to whether or not Betty has the legal right to stay in the house. Yeah, here, w w let me frame it for a second. Let's assume Betty title is held by Betty and Bart on the, uh, on the house. They both are on the deed. Bart dies or moves into the nursing home. What happens with the with, with the reverse mortgage? If Betty's a co-borrower, in that Keep circumstance, gone. then she can. In that case, the surviving co-borrower also can receive the money from the loan and stay in the home until she dies. She dies, or has to leave. But if Bart is listed as the borrower on the loan and Betty was not. Then you have a more complicated scenario. 2014 is the key to that answer. Okay, if it's after 2014, then Betty can be deemed the non-borrowing spouse. She can remain in the home, but you have to have conditions. She has to be married to Bart at the time the loan was taken out. And this is the real kicker. She has to be specifically named as the non-borrowing spouse and each year, you have to file a form certifying that she's the non-borrowing spouse. And if you fail to do that, she loses the right to stay there. And, and she can't she's in the house. And, she's in the, and she can't borrow any more money on the line. It's frozen. Worse than that is prior to 8-4-2014, what happens to Betty? Betty doesn't have a legal right to stay in the house, period. They will foreclose. It's crazy. The only remedy Betty has is she can apply, ask the lender to apply to HUD for like an exemption. There's one other. You drag dad out of the nursing home and put, put him, him back, back into in the, the house. house. Yep. Yeah, on that yeah, day you know, of certification. And that's because you almost have to do yeah. that. Yeah. You know, it, can you the imagine reverse you know, mortgage. You're, you're, you're wheeling him out in a stretcher? Right. The reverse mortgage has benefits and has burdens. The key to understanding what is good for you is getting the information and getting counsel properly before you take that reverse mortgage out and if you have one come talk to us because at the end of the day you might be making mistakes that are jeopardizing your ability to stay in the home or and if you're thinking about getting one for sure come talk to us it's not we're not saying the reverse mortgage is a bad thing but what we're saying is it's complicated and it has a limited purpose and in a lot of respects, it's being overused. So be careful. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with Law and Reality.